Hi, I'm Joff Hunt. I'm one of the regional team from Southern Counties Baptist Association. Uh, and thank you for your invitation to share with you on this occasion. It's a real shame we, we can't be together, but for obvious reasons we can't. But uh, welcome to my garden. Uh, it's good to have you here. And hopefully God will bless us as I bring God's word to you in a moment or two. Uh, may I bring the greetings of all the churches of Southern Counties Baptist Association, the wider Baptist family, but particularly from the regional team uh, to you. I hope that you've had a great Easter and thank you for this opportunity to share with you from one of my favourite passages uh, relating to the resurrection in a moment or two. I'd like on this occasion to take a look at some verses from Luke 24, Luke's account of the journey to Emmaus by two disciples and how they encounter Jesus. So if you've got a Bible, you might want to turn to those verses and we can read them together. Now that same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came and walked with them but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, What are you disciples discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these days? What things? he asked them. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. But what is more, it is the third day since it all took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things, and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it was nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while, we talked with, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem and there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. And then the two told them what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is one of my favourite resurrection passages. I think it's because it's about journeying. You get these two disciples that are walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. I love journeys, I love travelling, I love going from one place to another and therefore I think I'm drawn into this passage very, very easily and very, very quickly. But this was an occasion when the journey was not an encouraging one, it wasn't an exciting one, it wasn't one filled with rejoicing or joy or expectation, it was actually very downcast. They were in a situation of depression, of sadness, of distress, and they're moving from one place, Jerusalem, where they've seen their Lord and their Master, their Rabbi, their Teacher, die on a terrible cross. And they're moving towards, we assume, their home, Emmaus. And as they journey along, 
Jesus comes and journeys with them. And what I want to do is just look at this passage and just draw out three things that happens when Jesus comes and journeys with them in this situation. In a time of uncertainty, in a time of confusion, in a time of sadness, in a time when they were downcast, that's how Luke describes it to us. In such a time, what does Jesus do? And the first thing Jesus does, well, I just love this. What Jesus does is he comes alongside them And he asks them a question. A stranger comes in and asks them a question. And the question is bizarre. The question is this. What are you discussing together as you walk along? And to them this was such a strange question. But it's such a clever question. Because Jesus really uncovers all that has taken place inside themselves. All their fears, all their concerns, all their misunderstanding, all their confusion. They're able to offload this to Jesus. Well, Cleopas answers Jesus. He says, you know, are you the only one in Jerusalem who has not heard these things? But Jesus knows, of course he knows. But he wants them to express their thoughts, their feelings. What are you talking about? Jesus asks them. What things? Tell me. When we're in a place of difficulty, when we're in a place when we are confused, uh, we're uncertain, uh, we don't know what the future entails, Jesus is interested in how we feel. Jesus is interested in what we think. Jesus is interested in the things that are deep down inside us. Even though we may be confused, he's interested in that. And he asks the question to us, I think, what are you talking about? And in these moments, right across the world, we are all talking about the same thing, coronavirus. And we're talking about it from a place of confusion, of sadness, of disillusionment, of lacking in knowledge and truth. And there is fear as well in the mix of all that. Jesus asks us, What are you talking about? What concerns you? What are your struggles in this moment? And he gives us the opportunity to share that and to talk about it. Talk to Jesus about how you feel, just as Cleopas and the other disciple share with Jesus all that they think and fear and feel. The second thing that I draw out of this passage, that as Jesus listens to their fears, he also corrects their foolishness. And I don't know if you noticed in the passage, but Jesus responds to them by saying, how foolish you are. Sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? And particularly from a British culture, someone saying something like that uh, does sound incredibly rude. The word actually is anatoi, anatoi. And what Jesus is actually saying, he's not calling them an idiot, he's he's just saying, you've missed the point. You've misunderstood the situation and the circumstances. Things are about to change for these disciples, but they have not yet understood and fully believed in what has been shown to them. And so Jesus then unpacks the whole of scripture, and wouldn't you love to have been part of that journey with those disciples? walking along with them, hearing Jesus unpack scripture from Moses all the way through to the prophets about how the Messiah had to come and how the Messiah had to suffer and how the Messiah had to die on behalf of you and I. Jesus unpacks that all for them and they begin to see it how God sees it. They begin to see the plans and thoughts of God rather than the plans and thoughts of man. I was uh, reminded of those verses that are in Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 where it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declare the Lord, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
you know, as, as followers of Jesus, we need to learn to see it how God sees it. To recognise that so often God's ways are so different to our ways. These disciples, in their confusion and sadness, thinking everything was lost, actually had to discover that everything had been gained in the life and death of Jesus Christ. And so often we fall into that trap. When we see circumstances, situations, find ourselves in a particular situation we were struggling with and we don't understand and we begin to put man's perspective into it rather than listening to Jesus' perspective. We run after man's foolishness rather than the wisdom of the Son of God. We need to be still in the presence of Jesus, to walk with him, to journey with him, and to hear his voice speaking into our lives. The words of wisdom and the words of understanding. And in this time of coronavirus, our prayer is, Lord, speak, help us to hear not men's wisdom, but your, actually not men's foolishness, but your wisdom, your truth, your understanding. May we see it from heaven's perspective. And the third thing that I think is really important, or that I want to draw out of this passage, is that at the end, what we discover is that Jesus redirects their footsteps. Jesus listens to their fears, Jesus corrects their foolishness, but then he redirects their footsteps. It's uh, interesting that Luke does, writes this so cleverly. He, he talks about, in the first verse, verse 13, now that same day two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They're walking away from Jerusalem. And then by the time we get to the end, in verse 33, they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. They're going back in the opposite direction. Having encountered Jesus, having met with him, as he broke the bread, he reveals himself to them and they realise that he's the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Everything changes. They were going in one direction, following their own thoughts, their own direction, their own understanding or misunderstanding. And then they meet Jesus. They walk with Jesus. They encounter Jesus. They eat with Jesus. And Jesus redirects them. They got up and returned to Jerusalem. When we meet with Jesus, everything changes. He redirects us. He points us in a new direction. A new direction that speaks of the risen Lord Jesus. And whatever happens within this crisis, whatever happens within this disease... We have the risen Lord Jesus who lives amongst us. We have met him. We know him. We have walked with him. We have talked with him. We have listened to him. We have ate with him. We know that he is alive and that he is the life for all people. And so we are redirected. Our, our path has changed. We are back to Jerusalem. We are moving away from the comfort of Emmaus. And, and I guess they were running away to Emmaus. I, 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 I guess that. It was a safe place. It was, I guess, their home. Jerusalem certainly wasn't the safe place. Jerusalem was the dangerous place. Jerusalem was a place of risk. But they moved. Jesus redirects their paths from a place of safety to a place of risk. A place where they couldn't witness about the risen Lord Jesus, to a place where they will speak into the lives of others and tell others that Jesus is alive. So as we move from this Easter period towards Pentecost, let me encourage you to journey with Jesus. Allow Jesus to come alongside you. Allow Jesus to ask the question, what are you talking about? And share with him your confusion, your uncertainties, your fear, your misunderstanding, whatever it is, share with him your feelings and thoughts about the situation. And then allow him to take you from that place of foolishness into that place of divine wisdom that comes through the, 
through the words of Jesus himself. And then allow him to redirect your footsteps, to redirect your path, to take you from that place, that safe place, that secure place of Emmaus, to that place, a risky place, a dangerous place, a place of Jerusalem, the place where we will witness, where we will speak of the risen Lord Jesus. So let me just lead you in a prayer that I found this morning in my devotions and it was written by a lady called Rachel Adams. Let me use it to finish our time together. I come to you God and I place before you my dreams, my hurts and fears, my failures and my doubts. I lay them down at your feet where I know they are held. It may look foolish to the world. It may not make much sense. But I know the bigger story and I know what is to come. In this world of fear, I choose hope. In this world of exclusion, I choose love. In this world of distraction, I choose you. Remind me of your truth, Lord, especially in the waiting. When times are hard and I'm struggling to hear your voice, fill me afresh with your presence. Remind me of your great plan. And let the, let the truth sink in that I need only you. Amen. <laughs>